Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my version of Index Card of the Day 2019, my Create Daily series. Today I'm working on a 4x4 cardboard coaster. And the technique that I'm going to be using is stamping and stenciling. There's a little modeling paste thrown in here as well. So I'm starting with this 4x4 coaster. And I'll put a link to the coasters and magnets down below because that's what this one's going to be. I've gessoed the top, the bottom, or the back, and the sides, and now I'm just applying a some paint, quidacridone magenta, and dioxazine purple with a makeup sponge, and I'm just kind of blending these together. It just seems to be a real thing that I've got going on. I find that it really works well together. Um, just be noted, Initially, it's going to look very blotchy, but then if you let it dry, you can continue to layer it, especially if your paints are more on the transparent side than opaque. And I'm just putting the paint along the outside edges as well, more to seal the coaster. So right off the bat, with just the application of paint, we've got some pattern, we've got some interest in the background. We've got this two-tone. So now I've grabbed my archival ink, black, and uh, this darkroom door script stamp. And I am going to put this onto the background, just to add interest. I was gonna stamp with gold paint, and, and that would have been another way to go, but this is where I went this time. This script stamp, it's large enough. You can actually make out the words if you want. I love it. This is another one of my favorite stamps, and it's a dragonfly stamp. My quote says, don't trip over what's behind you. And the dragonfly is symbol symbolizes transformation in perspective, uh, as well as some other things. So I thought that was fitting, and I'm, I'm making this for someone. So I'm going to stamp that and I'm going to colorize that. Now this stencil is quickly becoming a favorite of mine. It is called Tile Mania and it's a crafter's workshop stencil. And I just love the, you know, they've got that circle inside these lines and that always just, it looks like stars to me or twinkling and stuff. Now because the stencil has straight lines and I didn't want to, it wasn't matching just perfectly. I just kind of put it on the edge or on an angle a little bit. Now I'm using the Crafters Workshop white pearl modeling paste. Now I am a, I do love my modeling paste, but the white pearl modeling paste combines the metallic or the shimmer glimmer that I love with the texture of modeling paste. This is absolutely to die for. You can't see the shimmer that's there, but it's just luscious. I, I love Crafters Workshop modeling pastes. And because I have this now on the stencil and there's a little on my palette knife, I'm just going to grab one of my uh, pages that has a background and I'm just going to push the modeling paste through the stencil and that will be waiting for a focal image and the rest of it. I just love how it just kind of sparkles. It just, I just love that stencil. So now I have the dragonfly and I was Googling the meaning of it. And there's the quote, don't trip over what's behind you. We tend to beat ourselves up over mistakes we've made or things that have happened in our past. And, and truth be known, we need to move forward. And I just thought the dragonfly is very symbolic of that as well. You know, I've been noticing them as I've been taking my daily walks. So I want to capture the iridescence that you sometimes see with the dragonfly. So what I'm grabbing here is some of the Hebio 
Dinah, and I have the pink one, and I have the blue-green one. And I'm going to use a little bit of both to kind of make my own color a little bit of purple. And it's very translucent. You know, you can still see through it. Now, after I did this, I did lose some of the, the sharpness of the ink. And a way to avoid that would have been to paint on the paper first and then stamp on top of a painted surface. And then you'd have the black on the top and it would be brighter and, and darker. So I'm letting that dry and then I thought, you know, the body, I want it to be a little bit more stark. So I'm just going to paint it black. But again, how you paint it and what you paint with, I could have used all sorts of my mediums to do that. But part of what I want to do in these videos is introduce you to different products and show them being used. So that if that's something that you're interested in, you can see it before you go and put your money down. Now, my favorite way of fussy cutting is to use the X-Acto knife. And I love it even more now that I have this glass media mat. It's a Tim Holtz glass media mat because you can cut right on it. And it doesn't scratch. It does dull the blades. I've noticed my blades have gotten considerably duller. But you know what? Well worth it because I don't have to drag out the cutting mat. It's just one less thing that I have to then put away. Because I don't know about you, but by the time I'm done creating, it looks like my room has exploded. If you prefer cutting with scissors, you do what works best for you. Likewise, if you have a glass mat and you don't want to cut on it and risk, you know, potentially, I know I've heard and, and watched and say that you can cut it on it. It's tempered glass. You know, if before you do, check that out because I hope I'm, I'm not reporting something incorrectly, but it definitely hasn't scratched and I've been cutting on this. The only thing I don't like about my glass mat is that I have this reflection of myself in it. Now I'm just playing with the orientation of where I want the focal point and where I want the sentiment to go. When you're working on a smaller surface, be it the 4x4 here or an index card, less is more. You don't pick one technique, pick, you know, a couple colors, pick, you know, one stamp. Don't overwhelm the page, especially when you're starting out. As you get better, you can do multiples of techniques and stamps and stencils. But don't think that you have to throw everything at it, including the kitchen sink. So now I'm just edging the back and I'm using the ink because the ink is there. I could use black acrylic paint too. I just kind of want it to shade around and frame it. And I wanted the edges to be black. So I'm thinning out some gold paint and grabbing my fan brush and I'm going to splatter. And the yellow of the, and the yellow and the yellow gold is going to pop because again, it's across the wheel across the wheel from on the color wheel from purple. So I'm using my matte gel and I am simply going to glue down my sentiment, which I've also edged with the archival ink that I just press into the thing and uh, into the ink into the ink pad and then apply with a makeup sponge.
if I wanted the dragonfly to be kind of 3D, I would have also painted the underwings just so everything's painted. And since this is a fridge magnet, not an art journal page, I was able to do more texture and 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 I was I could have done it 3D. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm really pressing it down because I do have the modeling paste there. So that's you want to make sure you have adherence to it. So I'm just going to colorize the back in the same way. And the reason for this is if I don't want to put a magnet on it, well, one, even if I do want to put a magnet on it and turn it into a fridge magnet, I want, I'm not going to have complete coverage with the magnet. So I want to make it look finished. Also, sometimes I may just decide to display it on my little wooden easels. And it's just nice to have it finished. So I grabbed my fine line bottle and I've got black paint that has been thinned and I'm just outlining the sentiment and I'm also going to go around the coaster. You've seen me do this before. It just finishes it off. And I find it easier to push away from myself with the fine line bottle. I find I have better success. Try it my way. Try it the way you feels best come more comfortable for you. Looking at this now, I would like to have some of that teal splattered on the background as well. I'm using a Faber Castell pit pen, and earlier I talked about how you could avoid doing this step by painting on the paper first your color and then stamping on top of the color. I didn't do that, so I lost some of the black and I wanted to bring back the black. So I'm just using the pit pen. It is permanent when dry, which is why I've chosen that pen. And I believe it's a medium tip. I believe there's an M on that. With the index card a day challenge I'm doing some of the prompts I may not necessarily do them in the week they've been given or they may not the video may not show because due to holiday stuff and company and just limited time I'm posting one video a day so while I've created them in real time in the proper week they're not going to be playing in the proper week So there's the magnet that you can cut and put on the bottom and I cut it with an X-Acto knife, but what I'm gonna use is these little black easels. And I'll put a link to the cardboard coasters, the fine line bottle, the easels, anything you see me using here. If I can find a link, I will put it in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are giving the Index Card A Day Challenge a try. Let's create daily.